Hi, I'm Pastor Gretchen Hope Wilson. Indeed, it's my privilege to welcome you to this recorded worship service for Sunday, October 18th. We are right in the midst of our series for the month of October called Joyful, Joyful. We are dwelling in the Apostle Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, that beloved first congregation that he founded. In this little letter alone, Paul uses the word joy or rejoice 16 times. And so are, we are reminded that our Christian life is a life of joy because joy is a state of being in our very souls and hearts. It's not about the external circumstances of our lives. And so we invite you to dwell deeply in God's word with us this day as we explore the depths of joy joining together in the second chapter of Philippians today. We knew a great joy this past Sunday when in our Zoom prayer fellowship time, we blessed numerous animals from our congregation, everything from a gecko to a favorite cat. And so we're so grateful that our community was able to find a creative way to know that joy of blessing animals this year. We are pleased that you found us. Maybe you came to the church website at www.gmpc.net and that took you to our YouTube channel at Green Mountain Presbyterian Church Lakewood, Colorado. Or maybe you're already subscribing to our YouTube, ch YouTube channel, but know that we are grateful that you are with us in worship. And we do pray that as we worship our wondrous God this day, that that rich joy that comes from a life in Christ will be made more real for you. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Walt Isaac, and I'll be your liturgist for this morning's service here at Green Mountain Presbyterian Church. We'll begin with our call to worship, in which you will see the words on the screen. As I read along, would you please join me at the parts that say all? When the Apostle Paul was in prison, he learned many things about others at a distance. Those early Christian followers who lived in Philippi also heard things about Paul's welfare from afar. We, like those early Christ followers in Philippi, often hear things about those dear to our hearts, not directly from them, but through various other sources. This lack of personal contact in no way diminishes the care in our hearts. We, like the Apostle Paul and those early converts in Philippi, love each other, even at a distance. Please join now in our opening hymn.
Our service continues with the prayer of confession and connection. Please join with me and let us go through this prayer together. Compassionate God, you know how our hearts ache as we practice social distancing month after month. We are weary of the being apart from those we love. We long to see those who are dear to us and to wrap arms around them. We know the Apostle Paul felt this, as did the believers in Philippi during his long imprisonment. As the Apostle Paul reminded us, you sent your only son to earth to be with us. You let go of him in some sense so that he would be fully present here as an earth dweller. We understand on another level how vast your love is for us that you made this sacrifice. Help us then, wondrous God, to live into your example of love. Remind us that being apart is at times the most loving thing we can do. Show us how to remain emotionally and spiritually connected with each other, even as we remain at a distance. Amen. Please take a moment now for your own silent prayers. Amen. Hear these words from St. John. And these things we write so that our joy may be made complete. And this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin.
our first scripture reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known by everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. We will go out with joy in the Spirit. We will go out with God. We continue in our Joyful, Joyful series in Paul's little letter to the church at Philippi. We will be in the second chapter, beginning with the 13th verse and then moving on into the very beginning of chapter 3. So let us listen to God's holy word as it comes before us this day from the letter to the church at Philippi. Paul says this, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I may be cheered by news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. All of them are seeking their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But Timothy's worth you know, how like a son with a father he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me, and I trust in the Lord that I will also come soon. Still, I think it is necessary to send to you Epaphrodites, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need, for he has been longing for all of you and has been, dis has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed so ill that he nearly died, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, so that I would not have one sorrow after another. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, in order that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Welcome him, then, in the Lord with all joy and honor such people because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for those services that you could not give me. Finally, my brothers and sisters rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we give you thanks for Paul's words to that early church in Philippi. We hear the intimacy today of those who took care of him in his imprisonment, those who worked alongside of him, those who traveled between Philippi and wherever he was in prison to help take care of him and to continue the work of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So as we dwell in this personal part of this letter today, we pray that you would be with us and that you would help us to make connections to our own lives and circumstances. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. You know this well. We are practicing social distancing because we want to keep each other safe. But it has and is taking a toll on us. It's taking, a more, it's taking more of a toll on some people than it is on others. 
I think about seniors who are alone and isolated or maybe in quarantine. I picture college students quarantining in dorm rooms and trying to study online. I think of those who are in the hospital fighting COVID or some other medical condition who either aren't allowed any visitors or maybe just one. I think of those who have lost a loved one during this time and cannot gather and celebrate his or her life in the way that they would want. And friends, as you know, this is just the beginning of the people and situations that we could talk about who have known the toll of these days. These isolating days are hard. During these days, we are often learning things about people that we care about at a distance. I found out recently that my mom was in another quarantine time from an email that came from the director of assisted living, not from my mom directly. A couple of people, the floor below my mom had tested positive for COVID. And so she was yet again isolated in her room for 14 days. I called my mom to say, mom, I hear that you're having to go through another quarantine. And she just said, yes, that's the case. Her only social interactions prior to this were with her caregivers or the few friends on her floor that she was allowed to see at meals. These isolating coronavirus days are taking a toll for many. We are loving each other at a distance these days though and finding creative ways to do so. The Apostle Paul and his Philippian church family were in the same spot. Paul was in prison, maybe in Rome or Ephesus or Caesarea Maritima, but regardless of the location, he was distant from them. He needed them quite literally to find ways to take care of him despite the distance. People in the ancient world and still in many places in our world today depended on others for their care when they were incarcerated. They needed family and friends to bring them food and meals, bedding, toiletries, and other such items. They needed loved ones to visit them and pray for them and converse with them and give them hope. They needed outsiders to support them financially and Paul was in just that situation. And so the Philippian church sent one of their own, a man named Epaphrodites to Paul with financial resources, words from them and his very presence to assist Paul. Some scholars suggest that Epaphrodites was likely a bishop or a key leader in that community, yet they sent him to Paul to care for him. It's quite remarkable. No wonder Paul felt such affection for them. In addition to their being the first church he founded, they were devoted to him. At the very beginning of his letter to the Philippians, Paul mentions his companion and fellow laborer, Timothy. It would seem that Timothy was not in prison and therefore could assist Paul and was even available to travel to Philippi. Paul wanted to send him to the Philippians, just like they had sent Epaphrodites to him. Timothy likely went to Philippi, maybe even with this letter, and it's plausible that Epaphrodites went with him as well because Paul longed for him to return to his community, as you heard in this reading for today. These men were emissaries between Paul and the Philippian church, and this was not a short trip. If they were traveling between Philippi and Rome, Scholars tell us that it would likely have been a 700 to 1200 mile journey, depending on the route they took, maybe across that famous road think we call the Via Ignatia for some portion and then some part on the sea. Scholars tell us that it would have taken between six weeks to three months, depending on the weather and other factors. So talk about a commitment to each other. Ephesus would have been much closer and likely more like a seven day journey. But the debate, com de debate continues as to where Paul was in prison. But regardless, it was a commitment to send someone to Paul and for Paul to send someone to them. And if we read the letter closely, it would seem that these journeys may have happened more than once. Paul wanted to send Epaphrodites back to the Philippians in part because he knew that they were worried about him. 
they had learned across the miles, and we heard about it in the letter, that Epaphrodites had become quite ill even to the point of death. He had survived this huge ordeal and his community was worried about him. Paul wanted them to see with their own eyes because they'd only heard about the situation at a distance. Across the miles, they had wondered if Epaphrodites might die. And I'm sure they thought about the possibility of not seeing him again. Maybe he even had family in their community and they were concerned about them financially and personally. Maybe Epaphrodites, as a key leader, was instrumental in helping them face their assorted challenges and difficulties, we wonder. But clearly they were missing him and longing to be reunited with him. We understand all of these feelings even more these days, don't we? The part that Paul highlights for them and for us that I think is so remarkable is the role of joy in all of this. Despite all the arduous circumstances Paul and his early community were facing, they had joy. The joy they experienced in Christ and in Christian community was not tampered by imprisonment, financial challenges, disagreements, political unrest, great distance, or numerous miles. Paul's joy was not based in external circumstances, but rather on an internal reality of God's love and presence in his life. This is the key thing that I think he wanted this beloved early church to experience as well. The word joy or rejoice was mentioned 16 times in this short little letter or epistle. 16. Paul rejoiced in them. They were a source of joy to him. There was great joy for him in the connections they shared with each other because of Christ, and he wanted them to hold on to this word. It seems a powerful word for us this day, joy. We can and do have joy in Christ regardless of our circumstances in the face of the politics of our day, even though we are physically apart, even when tough financial challenges arise, regardless of illness, and even in the face of death, we can still rejoice in the love we know in Christ. We can still have joy in our connections as a church because we are founded in that love, that love that we know through Christ. We have joy because joy is not about our external circumstances, but an internal condition of our hearts. Joy, it seems, then, is a good word for this day and in the days to come. I think about the various ways and examples that I have seen joy in our particular church community. I think about members who were celebrating a special anniversary and one of them was in rehab and in isolation at that time. And so the husband looked out his window from his rehab facility and the wife was down in the parking lot and there was a beautiful vase of flowers and they lifted glasses and toasted each other on their anniversary. I think about loving daughters visiting on the phone through a window with their father who was in hospice care. And I think about other members who have been in hospice care and their families decided to bring them home so that they could be with them. And they took up residence in the family living room and members of the family took turns coming to call on them and to be with them. I think about FaceTime calls that care providers have facilitated holding up screens for loved ones so that they could converse despite the miles and in the midst of quarantine with loved ones who were far, far away. I think about an 80th birthday car parade with some bringing classic cars for one of our members and driving by to celebrate that occasion with her. I think about chocolate shake deliveries for those who are working as first responders and groceries delivered for those who cannot get out. I think about hundreds of paper cranes folded in prayer for a friend battling cancer, family reunions at dog parks with pets, a pet therapy dog doing a porch visit with a lonely senior, making new friends in Switzerland who join us via Zoom. Masked volunteers collecting food and delivering food boxes and pet supplies. Socially distanced gatherings in parks. Two friends walking the labyrinth together, masked outside and at a distance. 
thousands of care calls from our deacons and hundreds of cards sent. One member paying the electric bill of another member or buying groceries for them and on it goes. We are connected to each other and finding great joy in these connections. We know the joy that we have through Christ our Lord and we share it with each other and we're finding creative ways to do so in these days, even at a distance, just like Paul and the Philippian Christians did long ago. In these last couple of weeks, I've had a personal reminder of the powerful connections that I know in Christian community with our church family at Green Mountain Presbyterian Church. The elders of the church generously agreed for me to be with my husband, Tom, back east at their family home and to work remotely in Massachusetts and to take some vacation time. And most of you know that during that time, Tom started having some chest pain and we went to the ER and shortly found ourselves at Mass General. And within 24 hours, Tom was in surgery to work on a blockage and ended up receiving two stents. We had incredible medical care and he's feeling better than ever. But one of the things that sustained us during that time was knowing that our church family, even though we were many states away from each other at that point in time, were praying for us, were thinking about us, and were holding us close. We took great joy and comfort in that. You would text, you called, you left emails and messages, letting us know that you were praying for us and that you were thinking about us and that we were not alone. That was a source of great joy for us. And so friends, this day, I think personally about the connections that we share and I thank God for each one of you that we are finding ways to love and support each other across the distance. And truly, that is a source of great joy. May God continue to help us to be creative in our connections, that we might continue to love each other, even at a distance. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of history, of every day and every year we live, 2020 is testing us. Help us, Lord, to see beyond our own discomforts, privations. Many of us listening in find ourselves burdened by our aging selves, waiting out the plague.
plague, but finding ourselves vulnerable more than we want to admit. And yet we know that our children and youth are feeling even more, even more penned in. When they don't use good judgment, it's because everything they're being asked to do is contrary to the way their growth is forcing them beyond themselves. Or it's in knowing that in being in school from home, whether in primary grades or middle school or higher education, exposes them to their own limitations, to uh, the difficulties of being in school and not in school. Be with them, we pray. We listening in, joining together, chafe about being restricted for the sake of our own health. And yet we see and we need millions of people closer to the prime of life who are needed and who must go to work despite special accommodations like masks and gloves and on and on and wiping down and cleaning this and that all the time and risk they risk these people who go to work still in all these ways. They risk and sometimes pay for what they do by experiencing the illness and its lasting damages and even the possibility of dying. We pray for them and we pray for others who right now are working in parched and burning forests until they're exhausted and beyond, who in another way are risking, perhaps even dying, to try to save the homes and livelihoods of others who are wishing right now that they were living in safer places. Lord, we pray find ourselves wishing for a little more money or a little more boldness to seek out more escapes from our boredom, to travel perhaps. But we know there are millions without jobs, without enough to securely enjoy even the basics of life who wonder if the places where they live and seek to work, whether those places, whether they even matter to those who are in power. Our nation seems overburdened with COVID-19 and whatever may be next. There's a whole world around, however, of those who in other continents are even more exposed than we and for whom the promise of a vaccination for therapies seem even more remote. Lord, we are so privileged at the same time as we are needy. We as you as your people wonder what next and how we can witness in the face of whatever's next. But our faith, which has survived through many centuries, gives us some basics and outlines and precedents and priorities and above all, our faith gives us hope, gives us hope that your word and your power and the presence of your spirit 
will make us able to bear up and to plow through. So we pray together in the name of Christ our Lord, the prayer that he has given us in this and every time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. are blessed in our community to regularly receive the Connections newsletter. Deep appreciation to our office manager, Fran Cook, for her incredible work for the Connections newsletter each week. If you have checked your Connections newsletter right now, you know that October, there are a lot of birthdays in our community this month. So I encourage you to look that list over and reach out to others to let them know that you're thinking about them on their birthdays. As always, we are most appreciative for the members and friends of Green Mountain Presbyterian Church who continue to support the church financially. In this month of October, we are taking time to think about the many blessings that we know in our lives. And in fact, this consecration month, when we think about the many joys that we have in Christian community, is a time when we once again consider what our commitment will be financially to the church for the coming year, for 2021. You have likely received a letter from the church and from the Stewardship Commission with a pledge card inside. We are most grateful to those of you who have already returned your pledge cards. If you did not get one for any reason, please contact Franny in the church office or Kathy Ziegenfuss and we'll make sure and get you one. Or if you just want to call and speak privately with our financial secretary, Kathy Ziegenfuss, and let her know what you would like to do for the coming year, that's another way that you can handle that. But we encourage you in these next weeks here to get those pledge guards turned in so that we can plan accordingly for 2021. We know that these are challenging times to make financial decisions, and so we appreciate the thoughtfulness that you are giving to it this year. Next Sunday, for the last Sunday of October, we will have our Consecration Sunday when we literally place back into God's hand a commitment of what we will be giving this next year as a sign of our discipleship, as a sign of our rejoicing in the life of faith. So plan on that for next week in worship together. 
This past Friday, the 16th, began the virtual crop walk, and that will continue till November 1st. Please check your Connections newsletter to see how you can be a part of the virtual crop walk this year to help end hunger. A reminder that today, Sunday, October 18th at 2 o'clock, we will have the worship service to celebrate the life of Ricky Morgan. That will be live streamed as well as there will be a Zoom link. So I encourage you to check, again, the Connections newsletter for those ways to participate in Ricky Morgan's service. Know that on Wednesdays at 9 in the morning at 7 at night, you can participate in a small group via Zoom looking at the sermon texts that we studied the week before. And Thursday afternoons at 4 o'clock, we join with our Episcopalian brothers and sisters for Episcopresbyterian small group time together via Zoom, also being called Precipice. And we are still in the midst of our study of Debbie Irving's powerful book, Waking Up White, and we welcome new participants at any time. If you are catching this recorded worship service prior to 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, please join us for our Zoom prayer fellowship time. It always has great surprises and great joys, as well as a place to share the burdens and cares of our hearts. And know that the following Sunday, the last Sunday of October, we will take a time to consecrate our gifts to the Lord for the coming year. Friends, may you leave this worship experience grounded again in the faith that holds you. May you leave this time experiencing more profoundly that deep joy that you know because Christ is in your life and has claimed you and loves you and walks alongside these days with you. May you go forth into the days ahead, celebrating the connections that you have and doing all you can to deepen them in ways that communicate the good news that you know in Christ. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you deep and abiding peace both this day and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.